I'm here with scrapbooker and artist extraordinaire Rhonda Palazzari, and she has got an amazing layout with so many techniques in it. We're gonna be doing this think layout right here where you've actually used the photo as the title. I love using the photo as the title. It was great, it was inspiring. And that's what inspired the background here too that we're gonna create. Cool, well show us how it works. Okay, so we're gonna just start with basic textured cardstock. I love textured cardstock. I think it gives that little nice uh, edge to it, finish to it. And we're just using a doodle template with some watercolors. Now you may think the watercolors are all dried up and they're not be able to use, but that's the beauty of watercolors. You just use a little spray water and activate them. Awesome. So once they're activated, I'm just using a simple sponge to just a regular in. cosmetic wedge from the drugstore. Yeah, regular cosmetic sponge. And I love the use of watercolors because you can get the variance in the color. So you, I can pounce really uh, hard to get a deeper color, or I can just go very light to get You know, something. I'm always nervous about using watercolors or something like this because they're so wet. But, you know, the paper is going to absorb it, and I think it gives you that just beautiful uh, transition of color. So it's not all just one thing. And I can control where it goes on the layout. And I have one here, right? That's already done. So here, and you can see, I didn't finish the edges of this. I gave it a little dimension by not doing it, not making it perfectly square. So once this is done, I just... And I also notice it's slightly off-center. Yeah, I like things off-centered. I don't want things directly in the center. And it's a good design tip to just put it to the left or to the right, depending on your photo direction. So Asymmetry is always more pleasing. Yes. And then once this is dry, I just take a paintbrush and I go back into, like, say, the black to create some little splatters. I just want it nice and juicy, so... So you mean, by juicy, you just mean really wet, right? Really wet. So it's fluid, it's bouncing, so that when I tap, 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 I get those drops on the paper. And nice. then I need to let that dry. And it's going to look something like that. Like that. And you can see here, too, I really pushed hard into the stencil. It mm -hmm. got a little gloppy, but I'm okay because the photo's going over it. Right. It's no worries. That's awesome. So what are we gonna do to actually build up the little sort of collage center? Well, I love pattern paper, but I also love altering pattern paper. And that's the beautiful uh, thing about pattern papers. Mm -hmm. You can take something like this and turn it into something like this. Oh, how? Yes. So we just start, I just started by trimming down the pattern paper just to give myself a space that I needed mm -hmm. to use. And then I took some gesso, and gesso works like a primer. Okay. So it gives the paper some tooth. So oh, you're it, adding water to your gesso, but you're not I, reactivating it. You can't reactivate you gesso. You can't reactivate gesso, but I can add water to it to make so it that's like gesso a that wash. was already wet. Yes. And it's gonna be a wash because I don't want to hide the pattern paper. I wanna see it, but I wanna give it that gription, that grab for the watercolor. So then that's what the gesso is doing, is just creating a little bit of grab. It's a primer, it's a little grab, and it's like a little white wash. So with the white wash here, I can go and take a permanent, and permanent's important part, black pen, and doodle on it any shape I want to. Uh, with the permanent, because I'm gonna go over it with watercolors, it needs to set, so. And if you're not comfortable with doodling or drawing, mm -hmm. you can actually use a stamp and ink it up. Oh, how cool. So you don't have to be an expert drawer. You can use your stamps or you can use a doodling template. So then I'm gonna go in with some paints and say I go back into the yellow and I can paint my leaves. So that's why either the ink that you stamp with or the pen that you use has to, has be, to waterproof. be waterproof. Has to be waterproof, yes. I see. So, and I see, by the way, on your finished one here, that you're clearly mixing I am. the colors. I like it when there is layers of colors, because I think it provides that depth that the piece may not already have. So, with layers of paint, you get that really nice effect. So, with this, we're going to just cut these pieces out. Okay. So do you have any tips on hand cutting? Well, I think it's always good to use a smaller pair of scissors when you have something very, very detailed. And you don't have to be perfect. People think you have to be perfect, but you don't because that little edge gives a little something in there. And then when you come to a corner, I usually like to stop and turn my paper with the direction that I'm cutting. So. It so you're turning the paper instead of turning the scissors. I am, I'm turning the paper instead of the scissors. I think it gives you an easier time to cut in the direction that you need to cut without making mistakes. Okay, and I know that you have some that are already cut out. I do, and what's nice about these is you can then give them even further dimension by simply taking your pin and curling the leaves 
in oh an upward God. motion. That's a great idea. It is great. It gives it that nice little pop so there's some movement on your layout. So with the layout. Here you go. Here's your background paper that you made. Thank Let me you. clear this out of the way. And while I'm working on this and laying these down, Julie, would you mind cutting these out? These sure. are great. This is a pattern piece of pattern paper with flowers mm -hmm. already on it, and it just gives you that finished little So I'm going to take touch. those tips, and I'm going to turn the paper into the scissors. Exactly. And we can just layer our pieces together. With the background piece, I use some black... Uh, pattern paper. It has just a nice little print on it. And I edged it with some scissors. You can take your scissors and create a distressed edge. It's almost like curling paper or something like that. It is. And then I stitched it for just that nice added touch. And I know that you showed me something really cool about that things to do strip, which is you really customize the paper. Here's your flower, by the way, to be something that you wanted. Can you show us what exactly. the original piece of paper looks like? Well, with the stack, it was a little too glittery for me. I'm not okay. a glitter person. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I like it, but not for me on my layouts. So I wanted to really use the piece because it's fun graphic. So I just trimmed it down and trimmed off the bits and pieces that I didn't like. And so then it was easy to just pop onto your layout. And we look at this. The only other thing is I know you told me that with this little piece of paper that's right back here on the layout, you just used a, was it a corner rounder? Or no, you didn't, you did something different. You just use a nice little circle punch. Mm -hmm. It's great because you can, tickets and labels are really in. You just stick that little piece in there. Oh, and you use a portion of and it. And you just use a portion of it. That is really clever. Rhonda, this was an absolutely fantastic project. You were wonderful, thank you.